At the tail end of the tertiary treatment, where typically most people take that water and use it for irrigation purposes, what we do, and we have the disinfection side of it, and we use uh, chlorination. It's actually a chloramat chloramination process. It's not that difficult, different from maybe what somebody would use in a pool. We also ozonate it. The ozone is very different, and the ozone kind of breaks down the, on a molecular basis the, the organics differently. Ozone is a highly reactive gas. When injected into water, oxygen radicals are formed. These free oxygen atoms work like missiles that attack and destroy some of the bacterial and viral content and helps to break up complex compounds such as fatty acids. This makes them more easily consumed in the subsequent treatment steps. So from there, it goes over to what is technically called their ultrafiltration process, which is it's basically a large filtration system. During microfiltration, water is forced through racks of vessels, with each vessel containing thousands of hollow fibers. The outer wall of each fiber is made up of tiny pores only 0.4 microns in size, or about 300 times smaller than the width of a human hair. The fibers filter out microscopic particles such as silt, protozoan cysts, bacteria, and even viruses. We go from that process, we go over to reverse osmosis. The RO process is different. People refer to it as a filtration process, but it's not. It's not a filtration process. It's removing contaminants with the, with the use of a semi-permeable membrane, and it removes the contaminants based on their molecular weight and their ion charge. Reverse osmosis works by forcing water through a special plastic membrane sheet to remove compounds such as salts, organic compounds, microorganisms, viruses and pharmaceuticals. Rolls of membrane sheets are wound into cylinder-shaped elements. There are several elements inside each long pressure vessel. As water enters the vessel, it flows over the membrane surface as it moves from one end of the vessel to the other. The membrane layer is extremely thin. It allows water to pass through or permeate, while preventing other compounds from passing through. Membranes remove molecules based on their size, shape and charge. Generally, contaminants larger than water molecules will not pass through, including most chemical contaminants and all microorganisms such as viruses and bacteria. Two streams of water are produced. Pure, clean water or permeate flows across the membrane sheets and passes through the membrane layers to the inside core tube. Water that does not permeate becomes more highly concentrated with salts and other substances. This water is called concentrate. The pure permeate water flows out the core tube and one end of the pressure vessel, and the concentrate water flows out another outlet. The tail end of the RO system, we have an additional disinfection process that's ultraviolet photolysis. The next stage is ultraviolet light and advanced oxidation. The water is exposed to strong UV light. This process removes any trace organic molecules. The UV energy instantly destroys the genetic material, or DNA, of any virus that may somehow have passed through previous barriers. Intense UV light and oxidation breaks down contaminant molecules. The process is similar to ones used in medicine and dentistry to sterilize equipment. It goes through the UV disinfection process. The water is basically so clean that we've got to dirty it up a little bit. And the reason we do that is it's so clean it will at attract minerals and things from the soil, from the pipes that's conveying it to the, to the beta zone and ultimately to the aquifer. So we add lime in it to raise the alkalinity up, kind of bring the pH a little bit, stabilize the water. From there there's a large pump station and we go out to our 63 beta zone wells for recharge into the aquifer.